So we've been following and covering this unleaded Avgas race at Aviation Consumer Magazine, both in some sharp commentary and some deep technical field reporting. In fact, in the December 2023 uh, issue of the magazine, uh, contributor John Sisk did a terrific flight trial on the performance of Gabby's G100 UL unleaded fuel in the four-cylinder Lycoming IO390 in his experimental RV. Rick Durden, consumer senior editor, you've been vocal about the misinformation and uh, really a drawn out distribution process of the FAA approved GAMI G100 UL. And uh, recently you were invited to fly GAMI's fuel in one of the fuel test beds, uh, Beach Baron. Let's debrief on uh, what you found. Uh, first, let's talk about the airplane a little bit. What uh, what is this airplane? It's a Beach Baron fifty five or uh, yeah, Larry. It's a, a Baron C fifty five that's provided by AOPA. They have leased it, and they've set it up as a test bed slash demonstration bed for unleaded fuels. And they're going to do it for any that uh, are approved. At this point, the only high octane unleaded fuel is the G one hundred UL that was approved a little over two years ago by the FAA for every single piston engine airplane in the FAA registry. Uh, this Baron is standard configuration, newly overhauled engines. And uh, I made a big shout out to AOPA for stepping up to the plate to help us get unleaded fuel out to the field. It's got Continental IO 520s. What about the fuel system? Well, it's, a, uh, it's a big bore engine, uh, Baron C-55. They've set it up so that they are putting unleaded, the G100 UL in the left engine. So it's in, the fuel is in the left main tank and the left aux, and they're putting 100 low lead in the right side of the fuel system for the right engine in the right main and the right aux. It has a very sophisticated digital engine monitor so that you can keep very close track of the engine operating conditions. All of the operating data is being downloaded and sent to Mike Bush's uh, sophisticated savvy aviation maintenance outfit where they will be analyzing the engine data. Uh, that's uh, an incredible setup. They've put uh, quite a few hours on the airplane now, and I was fortunate enough to go to GAMI in Ada, Oklahoma, to fly the airplane for about three and a half hours in a number of different circumstances, takeoffs and landings, uh, cross-country flights, uh, shut down one engine, flew the other engine on G100UL for about 100 miles uh, with no problem. Uh, I guess the bottom line of the report is, hey, it's no big deal. And that's a huge deal because we've been trying to get unleaded fuel for so long that to get into an airplane where you don't have to do anything special to start it up, to operate it. And it's you can't tell the difference. And I think that's a big deal. As we saw in John Sis trial uh, in his four-cylinder Lycoming, uh, no matter what he did, start, take off, cruise, descent, you'd never know the difference what fuel was being burned. Uh, pretty much the same thing in, in this uh, in this Continental uh, 520 equipped Baron. Very much so. You. If you didn't know, you couldn't tell. Uh, we did hot starts. I mean, we shut down and restart an engine in flight. Uh, we change. We during flight, we'd be cruising along with um, leaded fuel in the right engine, yeah, or excuse me, in the left engine, uh, and run unleaded fuel into it instantly. No change that you can discern as a pilot sitting there. Looking at the digital engine monitor, you could see very subtle changes. And that works out because uh, as a little bit of background for the STC process for the unleaded fuel, G100UL had to show that it was as good as or better than 100 low lead in all parameters. It couldn't be uh, less effect uh, effective usable in any parameter. That meant that the resulting fuel has between two and 3% more BTUs per gallon. We set both engines up at 75% power. We pulled them back to 20 degrees lean of peak. So they were developing the same amount of power. The engine burning 
unleaded fuel, G100UL, was burning between a half a gallon and one gallon less fuel per hour than the leaded fuel engine. And that's because the unleaded fuel has more BTUs. That reflects about a 3% difference. When we burned unleaded fuel in both engines, the Baron at 75% power was about two to two and a half knots faster than it was when we were burning the leaded fuel through both engines. So this Baron was retrofitted with Garmin's EIS. That's uh, the latest uh, Garmin uh, engine instrument system. What can you tell us about uh, what you saw for temperatures, EGT, CHT, uh, fuel flow, all, the, all that kind of thing, left engine compared to the right? The left, the unleaded fuel engine, which was the left engine, uh, the EGTs were slightly higher than the leaded fuel engine. The head temperatures were just about the same. It wasn't a noticeable difference. The fuel flows showed uh, between a half gallon and one gallon per hour less on the unleaded fuel engine. During the flights that we made, it was so normal that it was, hey, uh, this isn't a test flight. We're just flying around in an airplane. It, startup was normal. Everything was conventional. On takeoff, you firewalled the throttles. Uh, you got identical manifold pressures and RPMs on each engine. Uh, climb out, no difference. You set up crews. And once you had the, uh, with the digital engine monitor and you set up and cruise, then you could see the difference in fuel flow, about a half a gallon to one gallon uh, with representing the, uh, the higher BTU unleaded fuel. Let down landing, no difference. Uh, we shut down the the right engine, which was burning the leaded fuel, and we flew the airplane on the left engine for about 100 miles on the unleaded fuel. We left it at 75% power. We never went to full power. We didn't need to. We were at 4,500 feet, oh, probably 200 pounds or so below gross. Uh, if we wanted to climb, we easily got 200 feet per minute uh, climb out of it uh, on level flight. It would, we were just faster than blue line. It was nothing unusual. Uh, again, that would be very similar. That's a Baron. That's how a Baron performs. It would be very similar to uh, running it on the leaded fuel. Landing, <clears throat> shut down, nothing was unusual. That's what was so exciting. We worked so hard for so long to come in with a drop-in replacement, unleaded fuel. And it appears that we finally have it because it was... No big deal. Uh, you, you can, you've got a tank uh, half full of leaded, uh, 100 low lead, you can fill it up with uh, G100 UL and vice versa. Uh, the FBO gets a, a tanker of G100 UL. It can put it into its uh, 100 low lead tank. It's, they're fungible, they're mixable. It's just no big deal. Yes, I, I've been to GAMI before. It was, um, I've been down there for their advanced pilot seminars. GAMI has the most sophisticated general aviation engine test facility in the world, and nothing comes close. They can run different fuels through the engines. They can take them to detonation. It's amazing. And that's one of the reasons, I, in my opinion, that uh, they were successful in developing uh, a high octane unleaded fuel because nobody else has a test stand that's that so sophisticated, and the engine man general aviation engine manufacturers and airframe manufacturers come down there to do testing. The FAA sends people there. What we then also saw was that uh, after seventy hours on both engines on the Baron, they uh, took borescope images of the cylinders on the leaded engine cylinders, you saw the deposits in the cylinder and on the spark plugs, as you'd expect to see. You know, uh, what is the technical term? Gunk is uh, all over the spark plugs and inside of the cylinders. On the unleaded engine, it's clean. It looks as if it hasn't been run, as if it's just been overhauled. The spark plug's clean. There are no deposits. It's, uh, it's eye-opening, at least for me. During our flights, uh, George Brawley and I went to Dallas, Texas, where we met with Matt Jackson, 
who's the head of maintenance for the commemorative Air Force. He and the CAF are very interested in unleaded fuel for a number of reasons. The, the one that he first said was that he's uh, aware of the benefits of unleaded gas from the automotive world. And they've got to pull spark plugs about every 25 hours to clean them. And when you got a round engine with 28 spark plugs, that's a big deal. Yeah. Unleaded fuel, you aren't going to have to be pulling the spark plugs. The other thing is that immediately the oil change interval is going to double. So the CAF is looking at right away uh, doubling their oil change intervals, which is a, a, is a sig significant uh, deal for them. And it looks like, uh, or as, as Matt said, it's potential, there's potential they can run synthetic oil, or we'll all be able to run synthetic oil. We don't know if that's true or not yet. Um, Lycoming has a service bulletin out that explains that once you get unleaded fuel, you double your uh, oil change interval. Uh, the other thing that was commented on at the meeting uh, was from the automotive world that when we switched to unleaded fuel, engine life increased dramatically. Uh, there's no guarantees in the aviation world, but when you uh, reduce deposits in the engine, uh, that conclusion is a reasonable one. So they've been uh, getting this airplane out in front of the public uh, recently at an air show in Arizona? Well, that's correct. Uh, over this last weekend, uh, 17th and 18th of February, at the Buckeye Air Show and Fly-In that AOPA organized, uh, the AOPA Baron was there making flybys, along with another Baron that was also running unleaded uh, G100 UL at the air show. The AOPA uh, Baron then flew nonstop 800 miles back from Buckeye, Arizona to Ada, Oklahoma uh, yesterday evening in three hours, burning uh, only uh, unleaded for the flight and landed with uh, something like an hour and a half, two hours with fuel remaining. So we, they just demonstrated an 800 nautical mile nonstop with the Baron running unleaded fuel through both engines. So as we've said, um, it's situation normal, which is something in general aviation we really like. And you could read more about uh, Rick Durden's flight trial of uh, G100 UL in, in the March 2024 issue of Aviation Consumer. For Aviation Consumer, I'm Larry Anglisano with uh, Aviation Consumer's Rick Durden. Thanks for watching.